Okay, very welcome to all of you to this first Rubismo Cafe. The Rubismo project as such is a project on rural business modeling uh, with a number of partners from 11 countries financed by EU through Horizon 2020. And we're looking into different sectors, food, bio-based value chains and ecosystem services, trying to find business models, new business models, innovative business models uh, that could inspire uh, development of rural areas around Europe. And you can find our more information on our web page, page you see there, um, rubismo.eu. Uh, there will be a number of, of tools available there for your, uh, for uh, in seeing what we have found and for your, for development of your area. So uh, the project will go on for another year. And uh, this, this series of cafes is something we initiated as an alternative for doing uh, virtual, or doing uh, study visits to our respective countries. And we find this as an alternative where we have three introductory speeches on a certain topic and then closing with a virtual study visit. And this first circle that we call it, the three cafes and the study visit, we call them a circle and this uh, circle will be closed with a virtual study visit to Christine Bay Marine Research and Innovation Center, and uh, we will have all these uh, all these uh, cafes will be on Tuesdays at eleven uh, Central European time. So, and you're welcome to register to all all these three at the same time. And in due time, you will also receive information about uh, coming circles in January, February, and March as well. So these, this circle will have a theme of uh, rural innovation and we'll have three different speakers. Today we'll have Per Anders. Next Tuesday we'll have Gerard Schiefer from uh, ProQuantis. And, and then as a third speaker, we'll have Karen Hamann from, from Denmark. Um, without further um, uh, information, I'd like to introduce you to Per Anders, who's one of our researchers at SLU here in Uppsala, Sweden, uh, on rural innovation, business innovation. So Per Anders, please, the floor is all yours. Take it away. Thank, thank you, uh, Thomas. So uh, I'm at SLU, I'm a lecturer in innovation, and my interest is innovation uh, studies. And I've been involved in the Rubismo project uh, to some extent, uh, a little bit uh, uh, with analyzing or applying uh, innovation perspective on the business uh, studies or the case studies that has been uh, uh, investigated as part of the RISBISMO project. So I'm going to share some reflections from that uh, investigation that I did with my colleagues, uh, no notably Rich Richard Ferguson. So I'll start with uh, uh, conceptualizing innovation, a little conceptual language there. And then we uh, jump into targeting innovation, thinking of innovation in terms of outputs, and then perhaps discuss the limitation of defining innovation in terms of outputs, and then modify our perspective <clears throat> on innovation to think of innovation in terms of spatial uh, developments. So innovation broadly means develop something new. And a useful definition comes from Joe Tidd and his colleagues that innovation is a process of turning opportunity into new ideas and putting these uh, new ideas into widely used practices. So on the right hand side here, I developed a little where I illustrate innovation, uh, drawing on uh, the typical approach of understanding innovation as a, well, as a linear model that goes from idea to technology to market or to use of practices, but uh, more as a hybrid model where research and development, which can take place on uh, both in universities, in firms and so on, produce knowledge. And technology is a physical representation of knowledge, which offers an opportunity to do something. And here entrepreneurs can draw on technology as opportunity to develop products or a new way of producing things or reposition their material or products in different contexts. That means they can draw on the technology opportunity to develop new um, uh, offerings to the user markets or satisfy demand. 
So that's how that hybrid model works. And that's a broad, broad illustration of innovation. But really what uh, innovation is about is novelty. So how do we know novelty? Well, on one hand, we can look at novelty in terms of output, like a product or a new service. But we, can, we also need to consider novelty in terms of degree of novelty, like an incre incre incremental innovation, which means a small or a modification of something that already exists. Or on the other extreme, we have radical innovations, which means that it's new to the world, broadly. Um, a novelty also can be determined in terms of time. Something can be new at, uh, at a particular time, but also new uh, in relation to space or place. So something can first develop in one uh, geographical space or place, like um, cycle lanes in Copenhagen, which are separated from, uh, um, from the uh, road. And there's a buffer zone and then cycle lane, that, that, that kind of concept. Uh, has developed in Copenhagen and has also traveled to other geographical places like New York or Mexico. But the, the concept, the space can also be a conceptual space. That means uh, something that develops in one area, like aerospace with carbon fiber to make aircraft lighter, that material has also traveled to other conceptual spaces, spaces like uh, creating or manufacturing of uh, bicycles to make those lighter. Uh, so what uh, the terms novelty here has to be considered in terms of uh, output, but also time and space or place. So having introduced uh, the broader concepts of innovation here, uh, I then we, we're going to look here at a simple framework for innovation as outputs. And this can help us to target innovation uh, when um, engaging in such endeavors. So this, this framework is based on Francis and Besant and uh, product innovation. That means changes in the things that an organization offers, like a new product or a new service. Whereas production innovation can be changed in the way how products are produced and created or, and delivered to the market. And position innovation are changes in the context in which a product is introduced. And here the example of carbon fiber is and a good example where it moves from one context to another market. And business model innovation are changes in how the business uh, actually do things, go about and providing a product to, uh, to the market. So here we can think of uh, rather than selling um, um, uh, jet engines, uh, Rolls Royce are selling uh, air miles that is a product service system where the owner and the manufacturer retain the ownership of the product and sells the function it delivers to the user. And that is a change in the business model. But we also have to recognize that these type of categories are very fussy or have fussy boundaries and bendy and flexible. So have a look, let, let's have a look at the case studies from the Rubismo uh, project to think how, uh, and, these case studies from the business uh, Rubismo uh, project. Here data was collected from Rubismo researchers and uh, additional data was also uh, collected by SDU students. And the business model was uh, fundamentally used as an analytical lens to collect data and analyze these uh, business cases. And we applied innovation output framework subsequently to see how that works in relation to the value proposition of each uh, business case. So we have, here are a few examples to give, give you a feel for what, what these uh, um, abstract terms mean. So we have, for example, Blue Lobster in Denmark and Panier Local uh, to, uh, in France. These are two companies that have developed a digital platform that works like a market intermediary that connects the farmer, if it's uh, uh, catching fish or producing uh, agricultural outputs, uh, connecting these farmer outputs with customers, which kind of, it's a different way of reaching market. So these are perhaps a service uh, innovation or perhaps a business model innovation, if you like. Another example is ocean rain uh, forest uh, in Faroe Islands, that specialized in growing, harvesting and processing seaweeds uh, and mass producing these. And this uh, bio-based material, the seaweed can be used in cosmetics, 
It can be used in um, food and health products. And perhaps this can be considered as a production innovation or a product innovation, depending on how we see it. Because uh, the, the way of producing, mass producing seaweed is a, perhaps a production innovation, whereas uh, the product itself uh, can be repositioned in various uh, market concepts. Concepts, so it can be considered both as a product innovation or position innovation. If we, if we think about the different markets, it can be delivered to. Uh, similarly, we have Gorge Fisk, which has a land-based fish farm, which is perhaps a production innovation, a new way of producing fish to the market. Uh, but it also might be a business model innovation because it, it's contained in a building, but in order to increase uh, production volumes, they can draw on the franchise model and engage with uh, nearby farms to and for their um, production technology to diffuse or become more widely applicable. And then another example is Glen Keane uh, Sheep Farm in uh, the UK. I can't remember if it was Ireland, I think it was. But here you have a sheep farm that's repositioned in uh, agro-tourism, which is a way of repositioning an existing business model or business enterprise in, in another uh, uh, market context. So having introduced a few empirical examples from the business case studies, let's discuss these uh, uh, examples in relation to innovation and rural business development. So these case studies, uh, uh, which are, I've discussed just a few, but there are multiple case studies uh, as part of the Facebook case uh, project. Uh, they are very multiple and diverse. They are very different type of business developments and they cut across a, very, a variety of space and place context. It's not only space in terms of a place on a map, but it's also conceptual places, so different markets as Thomas introduced in the beginning of this uh, web, uh, webinar. So it's different industry sectors, so, so, so to speak. But and these uh, business developments, they also ex exhibit a different type of innovation outputs. So uh, in terms of the research here, uh, applying business model as analytical lens to analyze innovation and in rural business de developments might be limited. So the business model, if you're aware of it, it involves value proposition of that and how value proposition is created and delivered to market. It emphasis, uh, it puts a lot of emphasis on the factors or the building blocks of a business model, like uh, resources, activities, and how these lead up to a value proposition and how value proposition is delivered to market and how um, income is, uh, is created. And these type of uh, uh, building blocks produce and maintain perhaps a particular innovation output, like a new a product or a service or a way of producing a uh, value proposition and deliver these to market. But it overlooks the spatial context of innovation. And for example, in, a, uh, in relation to rural business development. So um, while I think the, uh, the simple framework to target innovation in terms of our product innovation, production or innovation, or position or business model innovation might be useful. And think of the, these in relation to degree of novelty. Uh, that might be useful to, to think about how we can target innovation, but uh, the spatial aspect of innovation is missing in this analysis. And perhaps we need to modify that in, a, in order to understand innovation better, because if we can understand innovation better, we can perhaps manage it better. So here I draw on a constructivist perspective in social sciences, notably assemblage theory or relational aspect of innovation, spatial aspects of innovation that suggests that rural business developments or innovation are situated and contingent upon social and spatial relations. And these relations both shape as well as constrain innovation efforts. So here these uh, spatial relations include both geographical uh, relations like uh, a place on the map and extant facilities in that uh, local or regional uh, area, but also social spatial relations, because beyond the geographical territories and in include relations to institutional or sectorial relations, that's also shape and constrain innovation e uh, efforts. And I think this analytical lens by modifying it and include the spatial as aspects can help us to zoom in as well as zoom out on innovation projects to make sense of these 
And perhaps if we can be better at making sense of innovation, perhaps we can also manage innovation better. So some key points, I've talked about innovation in terms of outputs and the degree of novelty. And here, going to the green screen here, uh, the green box, output can be product production, position or business model. But these uh, outputs, focusing on outputs and relation perhaps, uh, uh, does not help us understand uh, space or place where innovation actually proceeds. So focusing all on outputs uh, may be limited to understand innovation and spatial aspects of innovation should be considered. And here, for example, assembly theory or similar type of thinking can help us understand how innovation in rural business development are situated in, uh, in, in, uh, and contingent upon social spatial relations. So that was, uh, that was my presentation. Mm -hmm.